Now here's a short film from Adam Curtis, the man behind the century of the self, the power of nightmares and the trap. Well, we seem to have lost the art. This is a short and possibly unfair history of the rise and fall of the television journalist as a hero. If you go back 50 years, television journalists were creeps, above all to politicians. They followed the rule of their boss, Lord Reith. The BBC, he said, is for the people. The government is for the people, so it follows that the BBC must be for the government. Well now, Mr Eden, with your very considerable experience of foreign affairs, it's quite obvious that I should start by asking you something about the international situation today, or perhaps you would prefer to talk about home. When shall it be? With the questioning of authority in the 1960s, this began to change. But it was Watergate that transformed everything. Two journalists, Woodward and Bernstein, exposed corruption at the highest level of the US government. And suddenly, television journalists realized what they had been born to do, to expose the dark heart of government, big business and bureaucracy. It was the start of a heroic age in which television journalists revealed the sinister forces that we couldn't see and those in power wanted to hide from us. Out of it came much great journalism. But then an event happened that made it clear that despite their heroic confidence, the journalists didn't know everything. The Berlin Wall suddenly collapsed. It was one of the biggest events of the 20th century and none of them had seen it coming. <laughs> here is a brick from the Berlin Wall, a souvenir from your trip here. Jens Reich, look at it and tell us what you think tonight. With the end of the Cold War, the TV journalists were thrown into a new and terrifying world, where all the old certainties of good and bad, right and left, began to blur in an unnerving way. And it destroyed their ability to tell us their simple moral fables. So as a way out, they came up with a new theory. They had actually been patronising and elitist when they had lectured us about corruption in high places. Instead, all stories in future should reflect our experience. And attempts to explain why things happen were abandoned. A classic example was a new type of investigative journalist, Donald McIntyre. He set out to show what it was like to get mugged. He took his mobile phone onto the streets of Brixton. For three nights, he desperately tried to get it snatched until finally someone gave him his story. Oh, sorry, huh? I'm looking for a stockwell tube. Yeah? Stockwell tube. Oh, what's phone. Oh, fucking hell! Oh, my mobile has gone! My mobile has gone! My mobile has gone! And as Donal cried, we knew that he was sharing our pain. But there was one final step in this transformation of journalism. We cut out the middleman, the journalist. If you've got a story to tell, we'd love to hear from you. The email address, as always, your news. Commentators, who are they? Well, they're you. Now, our presenters plead with us to send in our photos and videos. They proudly present it as a new kind of open democracy. But in reality, it's something very different. Because the journalists don't understand what is going on in today's complex, chaotic world, they have had to revert to their old habit of finding someone in authority who will tell them. But this time, it's not the politicians, it's us, the audience, that they've turned to. The only problem is that we don't have a clue what's going on, particularly because the journalists have given up on their job of explaining the world to us.